Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So yesterday, unannounced, we obtained some new items in the Zen Market. These can be pretty good, especially for newer players. Even if you're a mid-game player, you might be able to take advantage of this. And that is Dragon Slayer Zen Packs. This allows you to instantly purchase items that you might need for the Dragon Slayer campaign to purchase Mythic gear. We can see they even sell dragon ridges along with those different parts here and even the elemental strands which totally don't buy. They're easy to farm. But they're also coming out with the Sharandar Shattered Diamond Shards where you can just purchase a hundred of them at a time and they even now display the drop rates which is great. Whether you should buy them or not, it's a different story, but it's very nice to see what are the chances to actually drop what you want. So let's cover everything here and ultimately what gear should you be getting from the Dragon Slayer campaign? First of all, I have covered in the past, but if you have not made any campaign progress at all, none of the quests, nothing, then you may very well want to consider purchasing the buyout pack. This will save you a ton of time if you are just trying to get the top gear instantly. This would be the pack you'd buy, 1600 zen, 20% off. It will give you enough rewards in order to purchase one piece of mythic gear from that campaign, whether that be an armor piece, a head piece, arm piece, boots, rings, etc. It's all there. And I will cover what you should actually be getting, what is still best in slot. And ultimately, you can just play the game and get all this. You don't need to spend a single penny of Zen. But that buyout does allow you to skip a ton of grinding because in order to purchase like your armor pieces, you can see it will require you to get Dragon Hunter rank 100. And that requires you to kill a hundred ancient dragons. I believe you can get to rank 50 just killing adults, but that's little point in that. And this buyout will instantly get you to rank 100, instantly allowing you to purchase all of this. So if you were looking to buy any of these new packs to get Dragon Hunt gear, I would first just get the campaign buyout. But of course, if you've already went and grinded that and you just can't be bothered getting a group again to farm some more you can simply purchase these packs to get the parts you might already have enough of these parts from your past runs and the only thing you might miss are these ridges that is for me in most cases how it is you can see all of these items we have here okay we do miss some plates ultimately it's the mythic gear you want here including the mythic rings I would usually pass on the shirt and pants these days. They have become kind of outdated as there's just easier, better ones you can obtain. For example, the ones from the Narbondal and Demon Web Pit zone. They come from Heroic Encounters, higher item level, and they're basically the same as these. There are these neck and waist sets here with the artifacts, but again, I would pass on those as well. There is your epic gear. I would avoid all of it but there is some mythic rings here which can be useful. You can see all of them require these elemental strands, some dragon parts then, and the mythic stuff here is harder to obtain because it also requires these ridges. And you only get seven ridges per ancient dragon hunt. And you can only get 80 ridges per week. So there is quite an incentive to just go and immediately, yeah, buy what you need here. You'll get 100 ridges per pack here. That's actually not a bad deal when it's 200 Zen. And then, yes, you could get the parts and you could get the elemental strands. The parts you can get from doing, say, adult dragon hunts. And you can see my documents in the past that I made, which do showcase everything. You can see the different ranks you will need in order to actually purchase that gear. And that is why you might want to just purchase the completion because otherwise you're stuck having to do a hundred ancient dragons before you can actually purchase any mythic armor. And there are some very good ones there. You can also see when you use those modifiers, you can get the different dragon parts here. 
the amounts of them. You use different modifier types in order to get those different parts. And then the amount you get is dependent on the rank of dragons. So you also do kind of want to do ancients there too, but I generally only use hard modifiers, not the extreme ones. You can watch a whole lot of guides that I made on dragon hunts. Again, all of it, you can just play for yourself. You do need to get a group together to do it because you will have to have five players to do your ancient dragon hunts. You can, of course, just get three and do adults, get everything you need, except for, say, the ridges, which then you could purchase here. And that would be the most budget way. If you just want to splash out and pay for everything, you can, and you can buy some of the best gear in the game. It's still some of the best gear in the game, which is surprising, but when you consider the very poor bonuses they've added in gear as of late, yeah, there are still some of the best stuff that comes from here. Particularly when we look at tanks, an end game tank build is still going to use a headpiece from Dragon Hunts, some boots from the Dragon Hunts. And ultimately, I'll give you some tables and lists of what you should be getting if you don't already have that gear or better. Generally, anything better from Dragon Hunts actually comes from like advanced or master content. And you might not be there yet if you're a mid game player. And so this would be the gear to get first before delving into that more challenging content and getting, say, that better gear. Most of the better gear comes from master, which is not easy. And a lot of you can't even complete master content just due to the difficulty level of it. So if you're a damage dealer, I would recommend getting all these gear pieces. They have some very good bonuses. And again, upgrades are only going to be obtained from, say, master content. There are a few exceptions, like the armor piece here. You can get a better one from the Menza Brands in campaign, but only if you're a fighter and a barbarian, you would get this armor piece here with the combat advantage. And then you'd go and upgrade it with the demon web pits so that it is then mythic a little bit better than say what you would get from the dragon hunts but for everybody else you're still sticking with the mighty chorus the serene hood again you'll only get an upgrade from say master demon web pits with the same bonus helmet just with a bit more item level but if you have a rogue cleric bard or ranger you could get this headpiece from again the men's ransom campaign the arms again you'll only get upgrades in the master demon web pits or jumping into the Master Imperial Citadel. The rings as well, you'll only get upgrades once you go into Master Temple of the Spider and then Master Demon Web Pits. So Dragon Hunt gear is really the stepping stone where it's at to jump from a mid-game player who's only been doing, say, your random dungeon queues and the casual content, and then you're looking to jump into, say, Master content or Master Trials. This is when you do want to have the dragon hunt gear before you get there so that you're still very effective now if you are a rogue i would get say the sharp jacket instead or even the tactful leathers as per the recent build i posted the rest is just the same there you can again check all of this gear it's all coming from the dragon slayer campaign have a look through it you'll see the different names keep in mind on this first section there is like might breaker's ring of clarity which is very good for damage dealers just stay within 20 feet of your enemy, which is usually what you want to do anyway to get all the team buffs. And then, yes, all the rest is here. Now, if you're a healer, this is what I would all get. However, that's for heal over time healers. So bards, clerics and warlocks. They all have their abilities, which can put those hearts on people. And these can trigger these bonuses and maintain them. If you're a paladin healer, unfortunately, you don't have any heal over times to trigger those gear bonuses. So you want some more static ones, ones that are going to be there regardless of what you're casting. So you would go with like these ones. The headpiece, not ideal, but you actually won't get a better headpiece until you say jump into Master Temple of the Spider and go for the, the regen one, the divinity regen one. And yeah, it's the same for the other healers. Headpiece, not ideal, but again, there's nothing really better unless you want to go back into hardcore Vault of Stars and get the outgoing healing headpiece from there but most of you just won't find a group for that. However, if you can jump into the Light of Xoraxis campaign, you could get yourself the Astral Raiders helmet. That's useful. Total healing bonus. And then for tanks, 
just all the rugged gear there. Full set, and that's perfect. They actually done some decent bonuses there for tanks, at least compared to what they've output it since then. The headpiece is still like best in slot and the feet are still best in slot. The armor and the arms you'll get some upgrades in again master demon weapons and you can also go the moon dancer one and also the new imperial citadel one just for the extra divinity if you are a paladin. And that is that is ultimately it. There's a ton of really good gear from there. Don't underestimate it. And it's quite a big thing that they're coming out with now. You can just pay to skip. And I guess they are doing it as a way to monetize themselves a bit. Especially these days, people would find it harder to find groups to run dragon hunts. Because, yeah, you're going to have to either talk with people, get guilds, and just ask around. You will find people who are willing to run them, who do need to run them. But they're a lot fewer than when this was the current module as most of the people who played the game back then got that done within the first month or so. And now they don't really need any more gear from there, have all their alts kitted out. But of course, there's always some people who want to upgrade a new character or are newer to the game like yourself. Don't have to spend the Xan to skip, but they're giving the opportunity that you can. Just be careful that these are like choice packs. You're only going to get one set of these. Same with the strands. Again, I would totally skip on the strands. They're so easy to get. You kill enemies every 30 seconds. You get around like 50 of a strand type, depending on what zone you're in. Check the links below of my video description. Pretty much nearly every video has the module 23 section with dragon hunts. I have links to videos with these documents, with the modifiers, and also with all of the dragon parts here and what's required for the gear pieces. This will help you to just show what you need. And this also shows you with the modifiers, like what you need to get the elemental strands, what type of zones you need to be in to get those certain ones to drop for you. And then you get those modifiers upgraded and you'll also need the strands then of course to just buy the gear in the first place. So instead of spending the Zen, you just do a little bit, bit, bit of playing the game by yourself. You don't need other players to get those. And for the, yeah, these parts, not so easy to get. You could, of course, just do, say, young dragons here, and you will get a few parts, but it's only like one. Yeah, it, that would be too much of a grind, in my opinion you're better off always jumping into ancient dragons and getting those dragon parts from the modifiers. Use the hard modifiers and the medium modifiers. Again, I've made a video. You only need four modifiers in order to make the most of dragon hunts. If we look at my modifier deck here, all you'll need is limited conditioning, resilience, easily irritated and death store. Just those four. That's all you need for everything. All the drops, all the parts. But again, hopefully this is somewhat insightful. You do not need to spend Zen at all, but at least they're giving the opportunity to do so if you wanted to skip faster to get to say advanced and master content quicker. Because again, Dragon Hunts has a lot of very good gear still to this day. Now on a last note, what's up with those Shattered Diamond Shards? Well, you can simply get them yourself by doing heroic encounters in the Sharandar zone You'll need to have that campaign unlocked here. Sharandar, it's got three different parts to it as well. Three different maps. I'll switch character. You can go to that hub area and you can just play the game for those shards. You have three different map areas. You have heroic encounters and each heroic encounter will drop you those shards. You can also jump into the dungeon linked to that area, which is the Vault of Stars. You can go and make sure to set it to hardcore mode you can only do that when you're on private and when you kill the mini bosses you'll get shards those shards you can sell them on the auction house you can see people are doing so 100 shards 26,000 astral diamonds what that means is that purchasing them for zen is an utter waste just get them from other players and you yourself can take advantage of the realization of this and farm more shards the price of these shards will probably go up after this video since people become more aware of them and how cheap they are and you can see what the shards are actually dropping they've got this artifact set here that is okay for tanks but 
I would generally avoid it. You're not going to stand still much. You can get this crystal crown, just an appearance item. You can get these crystal fairy wings, which are really cool visuals. I might want to get them to suit, say, yeah, the fashion of my shield with the galaxy kind of effect. And then, yeah, it will drop you some companion equipment. That's like random what you get. And it does have a diamond blessing, which are very good for damage dealers, giving a 5% extra damage for 15 minutes. However, if you die, it falls off. So you might need a lot of them. And you can only use them if they're in your belt tray. And then you can see, yeah, you'll just get some rough ass or diamonds with each one. And even the chance at a brilliant diamond, which to be honest, brilliant diamonds are not exactly worth much these days. You'd be better off with the rough astral diamonds. So hopefully that covers everything with those new Zen market sales. And again, with dragon hunts, you don't have to spend anything. You can just play the game. I would recommend finding some friends and people who need them and just doing a bit every week. Again, there is that cap of those ridges of 80. So you will do 12 dragon hunts to max that out and you want to be doing ancients again all my guides with dragon hunts link down below and you can also use the search function on youtube and find a whole lot of other videos with that too so once again a special thank you to all of these channel members for your added support thank you for watching and we'll see you guys around goodbye for now